Yeah, Uncle Ralph, you already know what it is. You know what you're doing. Video Music Box, I'm here. Real fans, real talk. And that's the way it's going down. Don't go nowhere. Fix your face. They ain't going nowhere. Ha. Face facts. What up? What up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats Man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log onto the site and you can hear it from them first. I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives. Uh -huh. Even tell a neighbor. Tell them about from spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out once. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. What's going on? Happy New Year. Oh man, it, it feels so good to be back. We starting off 2016 right with a whole lot of sports to get into plus a whole lot of special guests that's going to be joining us on the show today. If you've been if you've been following me on Instagram, if you've been following Statman, if you've been following Real Fans Real Talk on Instagram, you already know who's going to be with us on the set today. But uh, it's another extended family member. We're going to get into that in a little while. We got a little bit of sports to get into first. But before we even jump into that, let me introduce my co-host, the one and only Statman Skevich. What's going on, man? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Great to be back for the first live episode of 2016 of Real Fans Real Talk. And of course, I usually don't wear the backwards hat, so the reason for that is because Ken Griffey Jr. was inducted into the Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and there is talk about whether or not he should be on the plaque wearing the cap backwards <laughs> the way he did you know, throughout his career. And I am completely for... Ken Griffey Jr. being uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame with his cap backwards on the plaque. And there's actually an interesting story behind why he wore the cap backwards. He said, you know, it wasn't to look cool or anything like that. He said he used to, uh, when he grew up, he used to wear his father's hats. And uh, Ken, Griffey's, uh, junior, uh, Ken Griffey Sr., who used to play for the Yankees, and um, he, his father had a fro. And so the hat never, and he didn't, and the f hat never fit him right. Yeah. So if he would wear it forward, it would always fall on his face. So he got used to wearing the cap backwards, and it was, you know, he just always wore backwards throughout his life. So uh, that's why he did it on the playing field. So. Yeah. But that's something to show that. Ken Griffey. So I think if Ken Griffey wants to wants to do that, he should be able to, because he was also he had the, the highest uh, percentage ever in the you know uh, amongst the voters. So I think if, if if Griffey wants to go into the hall like that, his career you know he's definitely deserving of that. So that's like like Statman said. That's why we got the hats on backwards for right now. I'm gonna turn my my hat around though, cause I I'm definitely you know. Repping for the pregame right now. Shout out to, to to my sis Ladybug, who will be joining us on the set, you know, a little bit later with the rumor and mill. I'm, so I'm gonna turn that. mine forward as well. <laughs> and Griffey would not approve of the the front logo. His father played for the Yankees, and he said well, he, he might. His father he, played. He said well, he said personally that he would never play for the Yankees because he felt that the Yankees did his daddy dirty. So well, I guess that's why you know I always I was always a fan of Ken Griffey Jr. I went to the games. I saw him against this. You know uh, when. He played in New York on the Seattle Manor Mariners. Mm -hmm. Him and A-Rod together on the same team. It was a dynamic force back then. But, of course, Yankee fan, I had to root against them. Yeah. And, um, you know, but he would never come to the Yankees, and I kind of knew that, so that kind of sucked. Like, he, we saw Ichiro eventually come to the Yankees. Eventually, you yeah. want certain players to play for the Yankees. Yeah. He was one that I wanted to play for the Yankees, but it never happened. So, it's all, uh, it's but, all good, though. Other, the bigger name in, in New York sports, Mike Piazza, mm -hmm. the best hitting catcher of all time and a former New York Met, uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. He started his career with the Dodgers, mm -hmm. uh, but he had to decide whether he was going to be a Dodger or a Met in the Hall of Fame. He chose the Mets, so, and that's, you know, 
He was very uh, well re received by the New York fans, which mm -hmm. is not uh, easy to do. And, uh, you know, shout out there to the Mets fans. That, uh, At least they start off 2016 on a good note. Yeah. They did not end the year well. With that uh, heartbreaking loss, losing in the World at, Series, uh, yep. you know, at, at City Field, and uh, so at least they get to start off the year, you know, on a on a positive note with Piazza going in. So, congrats to both of those guys on making it into the hall. A lot of guys haven't made it in yet. Some guys that you know deserve it, but you know that their time hopefully will come. Barry Bonds and uh, Roger Clemens. You got a little little push upward, about uh, seven seven percent. So uh, they they getting there, they climbing. So hopefully we'll see. I'm rooting for both of those guys to get into the hall. Mike will see them. I, I want him to get in there as well. But you know you got to wait. It's always next year, as 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 they say. So looking forward to seeing what's going on with that. But once again, shout out to those two guys. And um, let's let's jump into a, to a little bit of uh, football because I know we got some guests coming through today. So we just gonna give one, you out a one last thing I want to mention before we move on from the Hall of Fame. You mentioned Griffey having the highest percentage mm -hmm. ever. That very well may be topped by Derek Jeter in the near future when he's up. Or for Mariano the Rivera first yeah. because he comes up uh, the year before yep, Jeter. That so is true. So that could be you know could be could be topped twice. But we shall see. All right, but it is football. Uh, it is playoff time starting this weekend. Uh, we could start off with uh, Houston, Kansas City. Who you got in that one, Trip? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the, with the Texans on that one. I just, th I just think JJ Watt is on fire right now. And as much as is, I appreciate what uh, Alex Smith has been doing, not turning over the football. I just don't know if, if he's ready to, to for the playoffs, and the Texans are just hot right now, rolling in there. So I got to go with the Texans on that one. All right, you're taking the team that you know a lot of people going with the Chiefs, ten game winning streak. Houston is at home though, and you know pretty much through throughout uh, the the first round, the home team is the underdog. Uh, but I, I do agree with you. I think uh, Houston will will yeah. uh, end up getting the upset in this one. Yep. So, we well, we shall we shall see the playoffs uh, start this uh, this weekend that wild card round. So we got to wait. Saturday and Sunday. Don't have to wait till Sunday. You get football on Saturday, mm -hmm. and uh, but we got the the Bengals against the Steelers. The Steelers, another red hot team, started off slow, just like Kansas City. Uh, they're the favorite to to go into Cincinnati and do some damage. What do you think about that one? Now, my Baltimore Ravens bias will not allow me to pick the Steelers by no means at all. Plus, you know, AJ McCarron is out there, you know, roll tide. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in, uh, in in the big in the big game right there in the playoff game. But I you know I think the Bengals defense is great. You know they, the offense is playing pretty well right now, and the, the Steelers defense is horrible. I know they got Antonio Brown on the offensive end, he's, who's pretty much doing whatever he wants this season. D'Angelo Hall stepped right in for uh, Le'Veon Bell when he went down, and of course you got a you know two-time Super Bowl champion in Ben Roethlisberger. But I'm still going with the Bengals. Like I said, my, my Baltimore bias will not allow me to, to pick the Steelers in this game. I think we're going, uh, you know, we're agreeing with each other, but we're <laughs> going against what everyone else is saying because across the board in all four wild card games, it's the road team that happens to be the favorite. That's the case in this one, too. The Steelers tend to have the Bengals' number. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, early in the week, they went out there and, you know, said, you know, wanted to go and talk trash and how we always beat the Bengals. You know, that's going to fire them up. I, 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 other professional players were commenting on that, okay. saying, if you're going to talk trash, talk trash on Saturday. But if you're talking trash on Monday, <laughs> that, that fires them up for every single practice. Every practice, they're going harder in every practice, and they got the whole week of fumes waiting for you to come out there into their house and then, uh, you know, and then dominate. So I'm thinking Cincinnati, uh, the Bengals take the victory uh as well, and you know, I mean, now if Cincinnati AJ been... McCarron gets a, a playoff win before Andy Dalton, does he keep that starting job? I don't. <laughs> That's a rough one, but I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I gotta see. I gotta see what happens out there. I don't know, but I think they might just give it to him if he wins the playoff game before uh, Andy Dalton does. But I mean, since you're speaking of that, they're saying Peyton Manning is going to play. Um, you know, not not this weekend, but next weekend, mm -hmm. he will be the starter. 
Uh, what do you think of that? I mean, because... Yeah, you got to go with Peyton. He came back in, you know, last week, you know, sealed the deal for them, to, you know, in a rough game. And, you know, it's Peyton. You know, you can't go against yeah. Peyton in the playoffs. I'm uh, sorry. You know, you might not win the Super Bowl with Peyton Manning because he's not the Peyton Manning of old and he yeah. always has difficulty in the playoffs. But you got to put your... your, your best quarterback out there and that, that's Peyton Manning you're not going to go and insult him if he's healthy he plays yeah. and he didn't play well this season but he was also playing hurt if he's healthy which he is now yeah. then I think he's going to play on you know maybe not at the level that he did mm -hmm. last year in the regular season but yeah. uh, on a better level than he played this season because he was playing uh, he was playing hurt trying to play through the pain and that's a whole different animal so yeah. I definitely agree Plus, people were wondering like IQ. Brock why Osweiler was doing well with the Broncos, and but I mean, you you got to go with Peyton. That's a no-brainer. But some people don't see it as a no-brainer, which is yeah. beyond you know. I, I can't fathom that. But uh, moving along, two more wild card games before we uh, bring on our special guest. We got Seattle against Minnesota. Minnesota is the home team, the home underdog. Uh, they, they got a pretty good defense themselves. I know the Legion yes. of Boom, Seattle. They're not in Seattle, though. And Adrian Peterson still the best running back in the league. Teddy Bridgewater definitely coming up uh, in his second year. What do you think? I mean, I really would like to see Adrian Peterson advance, but I'm, I don't know if they can get past that defense in the way uh, Russell Wilson is playing right now. You know, I think he's moving into that elite upper echelon of quarterbacks. Got his first 4,000-yard uh, passing season. You know, the touchdowns, I mean, he, he has been playing, you know, lights out the second half of the season. So I got to go with Seattle on this one. Yeah, I agree with you. Despite not having Marshawn Lynch for a good portion of the end of the season, yeah. Russell Wilson stepped it up in a major way, and they still have the Legion of Boom. That's still a very dominant defense. Mm -hmm. So uh, Adrian Peterson's going to have a tough time uh, on their run defense. Bridgewater's going to have a tough time against that pass defense. So this is one where I agree that the underdog – is uh, is the home team in Minnesota and Seattle is going to take that one. Yeah. Now the last wild card game, the Redskins versus Green Bay. Who you got in that um, one? I want to still take Green Bay, but they've just played so poorly, and the way Kirk Cousins is playing right now. I, I mean, I, I would have never guessed that he would have been playing like this. Um, you know, they just they're just doing doing some great things right now. You know, plus. You know, our, our extended family member Aria Quanjo is out there on that on that on that old line playing for them. So I gotta go with the Redskins in this one, support that uh, roll tie once again. And uh, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Redskins in this that, one. That's probably the closest one as far as odds makers. So the Redskins were one point favorite. Then Washington, then uh, excuse me, Green Bay mm -hmm. ended up being uh, the, the one point favorite. The, the, the you know tide kind of changed on that one, but yeah. you know Aaron Rodgers isn't looking like the Aaron Rodgers of old. But at exactly. the same time, this is playoff time. We might see the Aaron Rodgers of old yeah. in that one. But the main reason is the same reason you said with the Baltimore <laughs> bias that you couldn't pick the Steelers, even though Cincinnati's in the same division too. Uh, the Redskins are in the same division as the Giants, and I, I got to go with anyone that plays against them. But it's still Green Bay. It's still Aaron Rodgers. Uh, yeah. Kirk Cousins is playing more like Aaron Rodgers than Aaron yeah. Rodgers is playing like Aaron Rodgers. But I think playoff time, you're going to see a whole different animal. Kirk Cousins isn't going to play as well, and Aaron Rodgers is going to play a lot better. But uh, that wraps things up for football as well, of really now. Quick, before, before we do, because I know we're about to get into that video right now from uh, Anthony Mason Jr.'s charity organization, but Charles Tillman is done. So that a big part of that Carolina Panthers defense will be gone. Um, so that could be trouble for the Panthers. I know the entire defense is good, but when you lose, you know, Charles Tillman, that could be hard to, uh, to rebound from. So I don't know, depending on who they play in that next round. But um, with that being well, said. Since we are still oh, we on football, right, let, let's take a, a fan mail question because there's another big news. Obviously, uh, it was a few days ago. It's not recent news. Tom Coughlin stepping down on Monday. Mm -hmm. And we got a fan mail question. A lot of people writing in about our opinions. I personally feel that, you know, I would have loved to see Tom Coughlin stay. I don't think it's his fault that JPP blew off his fingers and Victor Cruz didn't wasn't able to play all season. You know, our secondary constantly had injuries. 
injuries between Prince and Mukamara, and our offensive line constantly had injuries. Uh, so it's a whole bunch of injuries and a really tough schedule because the Giants always have a tough schedule. But this fan mail question um, comes from uh, John from uh, Bay Ridge. Who would be your pick to take over as head coach of the New York Giants? And um, Bill Cower threw his name in the hat, uh, kind of, uh, recently. There was rumors around that. And uh, I would love to see that. If anybody, I would say Bill Cower for I'd sure. I'd take him. I'd take Tony Dungy, uh, John Gruden. I, I wouldn't mind coming over. I mean, you know, it's, it's a whole thing. If they're going to come out of the yeah, broadcast of, booth of, and yeah. go into the code, so back I, to coaching. I want one of, the, one of the legends to come back out and take over that job. But we got to wait and see. So with that being said, let's go Giants. Got to wait for next season. But if we can run that video and then when we come back, Anthony Mason Jr. and a couple of other uh, friends are going to be joining us on this set right here. Real fans, real talk. And in case you're wondering what video he's referring to, <laughs> this is uh, Anthony Mason Jr.'s uh, charity organization mm -hmm. that he, uh, he started. So a little bit of information on the charity that he started. All right. All that beautiful game One. footage. One, two. Check me out right here, yo. Down two. Down three. All up in my ears. The mic is loud, but the music is loud. Yeah. Because like it or not, when you become a basketball player, you become a role model. It's people that look up to y'all now, probably. In y'all family, you might need a little cut or something like that. But they look up to y'all now, so you gotta act accordingly. So you may feel like that. Oh, I didn't get the invite. What did it take to play Division I basketball? Hard work. Success. No. Success. Hard work, baby. We're mixing things up here on Real Fans Real Talk. <laughs> But we are back here live, Real Fans, Real Talk. Uh, great that Anthony Mason started that charity organization. And without further ado, back on the program with the Real Fans, Real Talk family, the one and only Anthony Mason Jr. Hey, how you guys doing? Mark, Anthony, <laughs> it's everything. It's oh, Trip Young. Yeah, I mean, you just oh, going to shout out to all the government out there. Yeah, you can throw it. Yeah, you, you, know you, you know how they be, you know, trying to track me down and whatnot. I'm somewhat of a big deal in these streets out here, so I, you know, I can't have people knowing all the personals like that. But uh, we definitely do welcome you back to the show. You finally made it to Brooklyn to the live show. And um, you got a lot of things going on right now, which um, I, I, we're going to just jump right into. The first thing is the charity organization. You know yes, we yes. all ways for anything <coughs> that's dealing with the kids and working with the kids so just tell us how that whole thing came about uh well i love the kids and you know i always been influenced by them especially uh doing while i was playing the fans and the kids during the game and after the game always showed me love and i always was respectable showing them love back playing so it kind of showed started there like during that time because uh my partner vance vance tour he was one of those guys that always wanted me to talk to the kids. And he had brought a uh, group of kids by one day. And I was speaking to him, and he was telling me the influence that I had on them and that they loved it. So we just thought that we should um, continue that. And once my father passed, you know, RIP, uh, it made it even more passion for me to do it, especially starting up at his high school. Well, yeah, we rest, rest in peace to, to, to Big Mates, too, because he showed myself and the stat man a whole lot of love. You know what I mean? That's just a, a real genuine dude. So definitely we're going to dedicate this episode to Anthony Mason. 
Pops, what's up, man? But yeah, that's um how it started out. It's basically it's a youth enrichment program, and we use sports to uh, just show how real life correlates. You know how on the court stuff correlates to what you do off the court. Okay. And a lot of kids just have the rules and those guidelines when they step on the field on the court, but when they step off, it's not there. And we need to instill those rules into them because it showed me so much personally to go on and move towards life, you know, positive and in the so, right direction. Something that Johnny Menzel should uh, <laughs> learn. Yeah. I know he's oh, a big Johnny king Manziel. now, but he, he definitely needs, uh, yeah, uh, apparently he's everyone good, says he's he still hasn't grown up yet. So, yeah. But, you, but you know, that's, he that's a from perfect a example why yeah. you teach them at a young age so they don't turn into that and they are somebody that's marketable, that's it's better for them in the long run. There's somebody that's marketable for endorsement if they ever become professional or whether they're not professional and they're just out you know they're you know being a positive influence in the yeah, community. you got to because uh one thing they say is ball is life and I I kind of agree but not because I feel like it's not life because if you consider it life then that's all you get from it's just the basketball but basketball and sports open up so many other doors of networking and people that you meet it's more so a tool through life that you use to excel and I, that's why I try to teach my kids that, you know, you use this basketball thing, use these partnerships and these networking, and these people that you meet mm. uh, to make other relationships and things after basketball help you excel through life. And that's what I do. So. To get a free education from basketball. There's exactly. so many things that, exactly. you know, sports do and just, you know, self-esteem just you know just exactly. and, and that aspect itself like you're even on a high school level even if you you don't play for college just to be you know um in shape health wise self-esteem a lot of great reasons uh for for sports but uh you mentioned your dad passing and i know you you were playing overseas and that kind of changed things up can you tell us uh a little bit about i know it was rough for you but that that transition uh, after yeah. he passed it's um it's been a um, cool transition just you know keeping my head straight and keeping positive thoughts in my mind you know I don't like to dwell on what happened or what I was um, going through you know being in the hospital with him but I just um, continue to stay positive that's why I can tell about anybody because if you sit and dwell on different situations there's nothing that's changing it at the time mm. so you got to continue to move forward and you know I know that's one of the things my pops would have did. But uh, yeah, one of the major things I've been back and forth these last couple of years, even when I was talking to my father, was about basketball and moving on from the game. You know, I uh, personally think I got a lot from the game and all that I could get, you know, as far as what I wanted to do with it. And um, when my pops passed and then I came home and uh, was in New York and stayed around for my grandmother and with my brothers and sisters and was speaking to them, it just, you know, saw fit that I stick around, you know, mm. even more so because my pops is not here anymore. For my grandmother and just, you know, basically for the city. Base, I really love New York and so many opportunities here. It helps my transition from coming off the court to, you know, this this type of life. Uh, the charity organization, I'm in the production and film, did some acting. So, um, is the, transition been cool. Is the hunger still there to play ball at all, or you just really moved nah, on to... I know people be like, yo, why? And you're so young, but it's not... That's the outside opinion of what the game... Like, when they, you look at an athlete, they feel like that's all you can do, and that's what you should do. And I'm here to set the example that, no, it's not. You know, that we're here for a bigger purpose. Our influence on the game can go to the outside world. It does go to the outside world. Yeah. It does touch kids and all that. So it's not just about basketball for me. And, and where, it never been. Where is the is the charity at if people want to get involved or send their kids to the to the charity or to the uh, program? Right now we're in the school system. So we're at um, Springfield High School in my pop school. We renamed. We had a dedication this year, mm -hmm. um, this past May 14th when he passed away. So we renamed the gym to Mace Court. And then, you know, they kind of established my relationship in the school. So right now it's an after-school program on Saturdays at Springfield High School. We've really just basically been talking to the Springfield kids, but some outside kids been showing up. You can catch us there, and then you can um, find us on www.familyon3foundation.org. Um, Sorry about that. www.familyon3foundation.org. So um, that's basically where you can get us, and we're moving forward. My thing is to push it to other schools and get other kids involved. We got some things that we'll be doing this summer with um, the parks and clinics and just getting in these kids' heads. Okay.
Now I know all right, I know you're not gonna be going back to the pros, but you were playing on uh, Team Uwe at the Rucker. Um, in the summer. In the, the summer, summer so, you, so you're going to be back at the Rucker. I love basketball. Like, yeah, right. Basketball is still, you know what I'm saying? But it's just the time. Like, I feel like um, when you're talking about profession and what you want to do in life, personally, you got to know where your drive is and know okay. logically where you're going to put into this whatever you're doing for the next so-and-so years. So I knew where my heart was and how much I was going to put into the game. Yeah, I'm hyped for some summertime. Who, right. You know what I'm saying? I played it. Didn't get the last but do I have the same then, drive to go yeah. for a whole season? We want right to now? see you at the Rucker, back at, back at the Rucker again, because oh. when they won the chip Dunk two years people. ago, it was kind of crazy out there, you know, so that, 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 that was definitely a good look. But um, I know now you also got the production stuff. Yeah, um, I you just know, started something called MCA, yeah. Okay, so and that's MCP. You're doing the music videos, you're doing the TV Short stuff. Film, TV. You know, we did. I, I was out, I got, I was out with uh with Mace uh, a couple nights ago. We was at a listen party for uh Nesta Shakur. It was kind of crazy. Now you shot one of his videos, or have you shot more than one of his music videos? Nah, I shot one of his videos, and then we did the uh party, and we had Cityscapes tonight. Yeah, right, so hosting I, a party. We can't, I don't know if we can say what kind of place it is. <laughs> we, we, we might be out there. To, yeah, we, we, we might be out there tonight. Uh, <laughs> it might, as uh, Mace like to say, it might be a lituation. Lituation out there. Time. Shout out to the lituation room. Yeah, I'm a radio host too, so I've been I mean, I'll you, a little radio personality. Place, I've been everywhere. <laughs> And, uh, I just tell everybody, you got to, man. If you got the opportunity to do something and you got the skill and talent level to do it, who says that you got to put that in one area or one space? I'm straight. Like, you put it out there. Why not put your hand in everything and just see where it bubbles? Not saying you, uh, I feel like you'll sell yourself short if you don't. So tell us a little bit more about the Lituation Room. Oh, shout out to the Lituation Room. Um, it's basically um, DTF Radio um, every Sunday, 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, it's just a fun little setting. It's me. For the uh, women, for the ladies. Uh, Who wouldn't love that? Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, on that show, I'm pretty face mace, you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, the Lituation Room is great. We've had a, a couple of guests on there. This Sunday, we're going to have Omar, the comedian, on there. So, okay. be interviewing him, seeing what he got going. And then we got different topics every day. Like, this topic is, um, is uh, uh, this topic is cuffing season. Okay. You know what cuffing season is? Yeah, it's winter time. So. Oh, okay, <laughs> so it's a great topic. Mark, Mark is with us. He's with us. He's with us for sure. Oh, man, he definitely... Is it cuffing season for good. one of you guys? Um... Well, first of all, my wifey for lifey, uh, Serena Williams. Is this for TV? She already, you know, she's been cuffed already. So everybody, everybody, the folks at home know about our situation. You See, know. the thing I can, so I can say yes, and Williams. even if I have three girlfriends, all yeah. of them will think that it's Serena them. Williams, so, yeah. the I know you ain't talking about the tennis player. I'm talking about the tennis player. That's wifey for lifey. Um, <laughs> and everybody knows about our situation. <laughs> But I try to, you know, keep it, you know, low. I don't go too hard with it. Even though that's baby boy, I shout out every so often whenever we talking about tennis. I make sure I give her love and whatnot. This is respecting, with you know, wifey, wifey for life. Is, so. <laughs> Not to cut you off too, and I said the wrong thing. Sorry about that. It's familyown 3org I just got a text message from my partner. Shout out Vans Tour, and I did bring them to um, my uh, my partner's Vans Tour and Max um, Cassandra. Sorry about that. Max Cassandra and Vance Tour, they helped me, you know, St. John's guys, they graduated with me, try to keep a close knit family on, like, how I work, but they definitely been helping me, like, transition from the court to this business world. Um, Max works at Morgan Stanley, he's a financial advisor, okay. and Vance works at Brooklyn Tech. You know, and he's going to uh, school for his master's in nonprofit management. So, All right, well, shout out to to Brooklyn Tech too. That's right across the street. You know where we at right here in Brooklyn. Shout out to uh, to Max and Van as well. We're gonna get them on on, on the next time because it's not gonna be the last time we have Mace on the program. Not at all. So we definitely gonna have shout them out on, Memphis too. On, on so shout out to to Memphis, Memphis, Tennessee, man. And now you also you got the Southern Fry TV. That's another. I That's mean, another entity. I got some of uh, Southern Fried TV. www.southernfried.tv. Yeah, no, no dot com, no dot com. My catchphrase I can't say on TV, but yeah, <laughs> southernfried.tv. Right. Yeah, it's <laughs> basically a, a, a music blog site for the South. You know, s sort of like a world star, but just pertaining in the South for all the individuals down there in the Memphis in the Mid South area that I, you know, that's where I grew up. So, just did something for the hometown. Okay. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about pro basketball right now, which is since we got you on the set. 
All right. I've been watching more pro basketball since I didn't play. Are the Knicks ever. making it to the playoffs this season? Yeah, more than likely, I think so. Higher than the than the seventh seed? So you asking too much. <laughs> I'm not, he asked one, one question at a time. Was like, crazy, okay, like, they gonna make it in the eighth seed. Then you make me feel bad when I be like, <laughs> I don't know. Like I just I'm, I'm, I'm giving just, them know, love. Like, I, got, I think they're gonna make the playoffs. All right. But are you are you impressed though with Porzingis and, and what he's yeah, been doing? Yeah, definitely, for the next definitely, season? definitely, definitely, definitely. See, I see, I, I got the socks showing. I told y'all. We gonna, they got, I can't find no talk dress talk. socks, man. <laughs> just the keep socks this, so just, just, just hold it, just hold it down. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna say nothing. I'm gonna tell them. Here they go. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This is real. I got a show. I don't want nobody over here peeking. Like, listen, is this the Michael Jackson socks? Hold on. Wait, wait. I need to check my Instagram right now. See if they hit me up about that right here. On Instagram, it's all good though. This is real fizz, real talk. The suit we keep it though, real you know all the time. Exactly. The you fresh cold. to death with the suit on. Yeah. The, so don't, don't dress worry about it. Like I, this is dressy for me on real fans. But you got on dress socks though. Yeah, yeah. I usually, yeah, well, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, usually so in sweatpants <laughs> and everything, and then you come out. I, I thought I was getting fresh. Oh nah, man, out, hey yeah. Keith, you gotta know how to switch it up, man. You gotta know how to switch it up. You can't be rocking it all the time. It's all good. Don't 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 worry about it, man. But back to this Porzingis thing. I'm. I'm a big fan of Big Paul Zingas. I just feel like he just need, uh, and it's because he's young, but that time when he just switches his own and, like, I shoot every time. I'm aggressive every time. If I'm open, I'm not looking for somebody. I'm looking for my shot every time. I feel that's when he's just going. Do you, you know. think he can develop into a Dirk Nowitzki? Ah, he's going to develop player? into Paul Zingas, man. Stop, let's not compare. You know what I'm saying? Dirk is Dirk, and then Paul Zingas is going to be Paul Zingas. What can uh, the next They're going to be the, saying um, in the future, or do you yeah. think this guy's the next Porzingis? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, then they might do that. Exactly. So let them, you know, I don't like to. I had to go through that. What uh, what else can the Knicks do to improve, though, right now? I mean, they haven't improved from last season, but what, what, what do you think? Point guard situation been good, but I, I, I wish I just, I, I would love to see just a star point guard out there. Who, who nice. would you like to see come to the Knicks? I mean, I don't think there's too many options really yeah. at this point right now that uh, could really get. I know they were talking. I mean, I don't think he's a star, but um, Brandon Jennings. They were talking about, but I, I think he would be a, a coming huge off an of injury. Yeah, and then he's uh, upgrade uh, still. Even coming off an injury, I think he'll be a huge upgrade from uh, Cal Durant because I just don't think Jameer Nelson. He's the right fit. Jameer, I mean, he's kind of old. He's, he's older. Uh, I yeah. just said Jamil. That's the only person came yeah, to my head. Yeah, because it's not I mean, I do a pretty available. good job at point and 2K <laughs> for the Knicks, but. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> oh, hey, maybe no, in it's the just future. The, that's the only position I see, you know. Yeah. What y'all think they're going to do? With, uh, what's up with Melo been doing well? Like, he man. has, but he's still Big not Melo yet. I don't think he's back to being that top five talent in the NBA just yet. Um, and he's I getting think back It looked there, like though. it was just, I feel like he was on um, rehabbing a lot. You yeah. Know I mean, like he rehabbed more than he was able to work out. Yeah. So now it's into the season now. Yeah. Now you see, because you see, he kind of slimmer now. You yeah. know? Three game winning streak too. Just beat the Heat. That's a, a big win for them on the road yeah. too Pretty in Miami. Dominant, so uh, can we talk about victory too? Exactly. Running the Melo, running the pick with uh, so we, we, Lopez. What's going? What's going on with uh, with, with St. John's right you now? Tell they, me. I don't pay attention I, to the. I journeys? mean, listen. I mean, we we do. Ain't you a New Yorker? Yeah, but listen, they got they got they got they got put some us. they got to put some work in though. We've been putting right in work. They, yeah, but I mean they haven't made it to we a final four. We freshmen, we freshmen, we freshmen. In, we freshmen. in, in we forty young. years, we just was in the, we just in the tournament. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm going to still support you know St. John's because they are a, a, a New York team. I, I wish them the best, but they got to actually show and prove though. That's what they we got. We improving now. You we know, got a nice little freshman class over. I mean, we're we gonna see. We, we'll see. We'll see this. Uh, you know what's going see, on. You with ain't them. paying attention though. Don't worry. We gotta, about, we gotta, I just listen. don't want to see no St. John hats on the table. We we'll go to tournament. Well, I mean, you would want to see that because I don't want to see that. Mark, tell him. <laughs> oh, no more saying no <laughs> I, I, St. You John have to, fitted on. Because I don't really don't, don't wear college apparel anyway, so you wouldn't see that for. I mean, this, for me this anyway. is New York. New York is not big on college sports, so yeah, well, on football or in basketball. I mean, St. John's is New York's team, but so is Syracuse, kind of. No, we just beat Syracuse. I mean, honestly, I would I would probably support LIU Brooklyn before LIU LIU Brooklyn. They were in the tournament too. They did make the tournament. Though, we just made it too. Yeah, but I'm just. But but I'm you with, supporting but LIU because they give you cameras? No, I'm supporting LIU because we in Brooklyn and they, and they from Brooklyn. They're across the street, across basically. The street. So we gotta, we gotta so we support, support Saint them, John's, man. You know. Plus, I mean, that's I'm that's Johnny for that's life. Nick, so that's well, about yeah. it. Johnny for I, life. Exactly. I support the Nets. Who? You know, that's a, the Nets. I support the Nets. That's a, that's but you ain't supporting Saint John's. What you on? Because you yeah, but I don't. Did you have to come through Queens to get here? No. 
You passed it. I did no. not. Did not pass it. <laughs> Bronx, man, I in Brooklyn. Exactly. I, I can't straight down. I mean, it runs through there every now and then. I'm not. Shout I'm, out I'm Queens, not against. Man. I'm not against St. John's. I just just. What you not, against right now? I'm, New York. I'm not against. I'm not against against no team. <laughs> well, I'm against something. I'm against. I'm against the Eagles. I'm against the Lakers. I'm against the Red Sox. Other than that, I could care less either way. It okay. just. I mean, I want my. There's my teams that I want to win. I want the Giants to win. I want, you know, whoever right, LeBron is This is the biography for, of the sports teams, right? Listen, why, I can't want the Giants to win. Why? On, That's a New York Trade team, the, the Giants. Trade the quarterback. The Giants have a good quarterback. All right, do we have time here for shot for shot, or should we just You know what, uh, we're going, because I'm liking the way this conversation is going. We're going to put off on, on shot for shot for Ray. Y'all yeah, got Patron? Do we got Patron? No, we ain't. Oh, we, uh, you we, talking about We're not good hosts because yeah. we didn't. We, we didn't bring the you Patron. Shot out. for shot. I'm, I'm like, like it's Patron. That's, in the the, that's the game. The game show that we play on uh, Real Fans Real Talk that you judged the last time we, we, you you was on here. But we ain't gonna do shot for shot this week because I mean, the conversation the fans, is getting. It, it, we, we can't have Ladybug judge. So the yeah. it's shot for shot. Shout out Ladybug too. I see you at the Ladybug. Yeah, but, she but, helped uh, me out. Since uh, oh, safe and we, we're running a little on time, and I want Ladybug to get cut off the program, uh, we'll mention the info on your charity, and we're going to run the video one more time to give that charity a little extra yeah, promo shout for out those to family of you on three, Lee. Youth Enrichment Pro Shout out to Family on 3, Youth Enrichment Program out of Queens, working in the um, school system right now. We are at Springfield High, my pop's uh, high school, and um, you can reach us at www.familyon3.org. That's right. right. You know we for the kids on Real Fans Real Talk, man. And follow us, too. I'm sorry. Follow us at, at Family on 3. Instagram, IG. Follow us, man. Doing a lot of good things for the kids. Definitely. All right. So, so we get that, that get that video again. going one more time. It's for the kids, man. You got to support the kids. That's what we do all the time. We all about the charities. Anything that's in support of the kids and somebody that's giving back to our youth, Real fans, real talk is all about that. We all for that. So 100%. shout out to you for that, Mason, and, and, and keeping up with that. Cause real listen, fans, real talk. People in that in the lake don't always give back, and you know I feel like they don't always give as much as they should, and not and not even financially, but just the time and yeah, giving back to the communities the that time. you're from. Mm -hmm. which One is thing is about you don't have to give money. Yeah, them but kids just want to talk to some people. Exactly on the front lines, and they can Facts. actually see. And, and, and touch the, the, the guys that they look at on TV that they look up to and they're giving, giving that time back to them, that's bigger than just saying, oh, let me just cut a $100,000 check in here and just do whatever. And then it's like, all right, well, what now? Yeah. All right, we got some, we got, we got some new basketballs and some new uniforms, but we don't have nobody that's giving us that time where we might not have, you know, those, those role models, those positive role models in our life to sit and talk with us to deter us from the negative things that these kids are getting into these days, you know? Because we've been through it. I just feel that's my thing. If you've been through it, go share your story with the kids so they don't have to go through it. Or at least they can dodge, dodge some of those obstacles that you did. Exactly. That you didn't. So that's where, that's where it's Family at. Family on three, man. We're yes. definitely going to Oh, and tell them where they can get you at on Instagram as well. Oh, yeah. Find me at Young Mace Jr. That's my Instagram, my Twitter. Um, Anthony Mason Jr. on Family. I mean, on Facebook. Family on three on my mind. Uh, Anthony Mason Jr. on Facebook, uh, Young Mace Jr. on every other social media. Y U N G M A S E J R, or Aura, like the old heads used to say. <laughs> J Aura. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so whenever y'all ready in the, in the booth back there, we're gonna run that video one more game. But we got a couple of uh, uh, TikToks before we uh, before we do jump in into that video. What's up, ma? So shout out, <laughs> shout out to shout out to the to the whole family back there. We're gonna, you know what? Let's take this fan mail question really quick while we waiting. Uh, have you guys gotten the word yet on any of the celebs that will be playing in Balling for Peace this year? And I guess they're referring to uh, to the basketball game that's going to uh, to to be uh, two Saturdays. Are you gonna represent? Me? See, <laughs> you gonna represent me? And I and I spoke to him about it because. Because Mace did play in the Bowling for Peace football game over the summer, so I was I, I wanted to know if he was going to play, but maybe it's not fair if he does play since he's a pro. And it, it, you know, it's, it's the celebs that aren't really pro bowlers that's going to be playing. But are you going to be playing? I, I don't play basketball anymore. Nah, he don't play basketball. I thought you were going to play in the summer. That's what you had to record. <laughs> yeah, summertime. Oh, uh, so okay, it's not it's not. I'm so in you don't play, you don't play right in the winter. You don't play in the, in the winter. Now nah, I might play. Now nah, I don't know this because it's my people. It's Haran. Shout out to Haran, Punch Dollar, Midge, and everybody. Just you know putting that thing together but uh mm -hmm. hey I might I might uh my birthday is actually two days after so and my mom is 
begging me to come home. So we well, so we going we going we going definitely to see like you said. Shout out to Mejin and uh, Punch Dollars, and shout out to Haron who will be here next Thursday with us live talking more about uh, Balling for Peace. Um, I do know so far that's that's confirmed. Uh, DJ Just is supposed to be there. DJ uh, Just, yeah, DJ Just. If y'all watch, I know y'all watch Wildin' Out, Nick Cannon Wildin' Out. Uh, Rip Michaels is is uh, is supposed to be there. Uh, of course, Graf is supposed to be there. Uh, who else? It's a lot. Of, it's a lot. Of, I don't know if Graf is playing or he's you coaching play. this year. I was gonna play, but the way my knee injury is set up, uh, I'm not gonna get to play this year. As you know, I'm fresh off the off the injury. I don't want to push you got it. Got no kneecaps. Plus, they got me covering. The, you know, they got me covering the game. Uh, you know, as me and myself and the stab, and they always want us to, to cover. You know, the games. So that's why I'm not going. I'm not gonna play this year. You got no kneecaps. But we do have the video ready. And um, I'm gonna stop you from taking shots right now. Maybe I see you over. This is, and this is this is this is what, what we do when whenever we we in the same place. We go back and forth with this. That's why I'm not gonna put no more attention on them tube socks you got on with that suit. And we just gonna jump straight into the video. <laughs> you see it? You see this 8x shirt he got on too? Let's jump into the into the video right now. Check me out right here, yo. Down two. Down three. All up in my ears. The mic is loud, but the music ain't loud. Yeah. Because like it or not, when you become a basketball player, you become a role model. It's people that look up to y'all and y'all probably. And y'all family, you might need a little cut or something like that. But they look up to y'all now, so you gotta act accordingly. So you may feel like that. They just opened a lot of doors for me. Like I'm in California and I'm in New York right now. I'm here with y'all. And I never thought that this would be possible. So you just gotta take what you take what you can get with this, man. It'll take you a long way. You can meet a lot of people, make a lot of money do something bigger than just basketball. Basketball is just a tool to get you where you really want to get in life. What does it take to play the big one basketball? Hard work. Success. No. Success. Hard work, baby. Determination. Dedication, Back once again, if you are just joining us, this is Real Fans Real Talk. Trip Young here with Mark the Statman Skevich, our family members, extended family, Anthony Mason Jr. And if you notice that the, the set just got a, a, a lot sexier, <laughs> that's because Lady Black has joined us. I don't know where she going after this, where she coming from, but she came mm -hmm. on the set, you know, all, all looking all snazzy right <laughs> no, now. You know, I... she got the gossip for us. So what's going on, Lady Black? Happy New Year. Happy New Year <laughs> to everybody. I hate when Trip does this. You do this all the time. It's 2016. You know, I had to switch it up. I had to do my little ode to Amber right quick for 2016. Uh -huh. I had to start it off right. Thank you, though. I appreciate <laughs> the compliment. I just came from work. People know. Follow me. Oh, I work. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me get into it. So you already know it's been crazy holidays, crazy mess. Let me start off with Mr. Mike Tyson, though, because this was just funny. Now, you know, a lot of kids and a lot of people. Come on, Trip, you can't laugh. I'm sorry. Go you, ahead, have go ahead. To, you have to build up the anticipation. Anytime you say Mike Tyson, I laugh, though. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so anyway, Mike Tyson, um, you know, like I said, for the holidays, a lot of people got those nice little hoverboard things that are now getting ticketed. But um, Mike Tyson was photoed, you know, practicing, and he took a pretty nasty fall. Now his doctor's saying he has to, you know, he is on mandatory bed rest <laughs> due to the accident. He has to, you know, be in bed, stay home, keep it <laughs> chill because he really hurt something. You know, he's up there. He ain't a young blood no more. He got up there, you know. The way he fell, even if he was <laughs> young. 
<laughs> I just want to hear him. I want to hear his the, reaction. The, 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 the bigger he, he has to be in fall. bed right yeah. now. Yeah. I want to hear him explain it. Like, yo, yeah. man, I was on the board and <laughs> <laughs> just went crazy. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he going to have to. I, don't I like know, that man. impression. Just that impression was kind of like, yeah. I don't know what happened. All the kids tell me, jump on, jump yeah. on. I'm like, no. Yeah. I thought it would be fun, but I ended up falling on my face. Like, yeah, it was not a good look. Yo, I don't know, man. I feel the mic. You been on the hoverboard? I have not been on a hoverboard. I'm refusing I'm to get with on. Those I things. am denying it's all It's technically offers, not a hoverboard, so. though. Not, like, not, they call them hoverboards, <laughs> but... You are crazy. But, um, yeah, um, you know, another thing, you know, I guess people was feeling in the holiday spirit, and uh, Adrian Broner definitely got his whole team some really big rings. They needed some really nice things, and I guess he tried to follow with the whole, uh, you know, Chris Brown, because Chris Brown did it, too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the infamous Drake, you know, for doing that hit with the uh, uh, future, yeah, thank you. Oh, look, you see, you need to do it with me. Come on, Anthony, we're gonna do this next time. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, Adrian Bronner definitely jumped on the bad wing and got his whole crew really fun. nice rings. Yo, I kinda yo, want yo, one, but yo, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely shout out to that. Also, a congratulations to Drea. She's, uh, you know, she, she's uh, pregnant, congratulations, uh, with, uh, Congratulations or land. on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. You I don't know what I have to. No, you know what I have to reference. No, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For, from the cowgirls. She finally got it. She finally. She finally got. She finally Scandrick, got Orlando Scandrick. She, from the cowgirls. She finally got her come up. So it, you know it's. But no, don't, don't say know. that. Yeah. Don't say that. She <laughs> has a blessing, and we are gonna call it a blessing. We are not gonna call it a how, come up. That's so shallow. Said, Eighteen years. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Trip, you can't do that. <laughs> she, like she, okay, she's somebody that's known. She had for, her, her record know, deleted. That's what she said on the radio. She's not on the radio. She said her record deleted. was deleted. She's known for ball so hopping. And your record does not get deleted just because you get pregnant by somebody. No, she, that was a while ago. This, that was like a, a while ago that she said it got deleted. Wasn't she just messing with somebody so, else last week? Stop it. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. It's, it's, the numbers are so high, I can't keep it's counting. Never you? Deleted, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, that, don't, that don't go nowhere. <laughs> but congratulations on. Congratulations. You know, I like the you know. yeah. browser history where you can just go yeah. over oh, the history. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work it's not that, that way. simple. Like. Especially when you're on TV as a known. You know, go ahead, lady boy. And everybody's still alive. <laughs> uh -oh. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true as well. So, but shout out to her. Congratulations. No, congratulations, shout out to definitely. Bad. I'm sorry. You, know, you see, that's is. what I'm saying. That's, that's, it was bound yeah. to happen. Hey. But <laughs> you gotta pay the cost to be the boss with that one, though. But uh, ahead, definitely, boy. you know, another. You know, it was it was during the holidays, so we didn't really get a chance to talk about it. But congratulations to Tiana Taylor and Iman Shepard. They did have mm -hmm. their their daughter, and it was like a home birth. So shout outs to them. Congratulations. You know, many, many blessings we were talking about. We would have a home birth. Well, you're bringing the baby. Like. Yeah, I mean, he my, definitely my did it. was born in the house. So I'm saying you. I mean, could I, well, if, if wifey for life, <laughs> if wifey for life, no, was going to the home birth. If Serena yeah, was Serena. having a home birth, yeah, I'd be right there with her. I might pass she out. He but might pass I, out. But when I wake he's... up, I'm going to catch that baby. What? <laughs> Your leg's strong enough to have a baby by herself. You know, <laughs> hey, listen now. Don't be talking about my wifey legs like that. Right. I have to actually watch the tone. All right? <laughs> anyway. Since it's 2016, you know I gotta do my uh, my input for my uh, Mayweather versus the world. Okay. You know I have to add the, another uh, page. In 2016, page I had to start 17. off my yeah, yeah. I had to had to start it off. Basically now, you know it, it's him and uh, UFC fighter Conor McGregor. Basically, he's saying that uh, you know he is allowed. Uh, you know, he's allowed to talk all that smack because of his skin color, because he is of, you know, Caucasian descent. He is allowed to talk all that smack. If it was anyone else, they would not let it, you know, they would not let it go that far. So how do you guys... So May Floyd Mayweather uh -huh. is coming at uh, Conor McGregor, who's a UFC fighter, mm -hmm. and basically his claims is that McGregor talks too much smack, but they let him talk smack because he's white. Yeah, for sure, but he can't say that. Mayweather, cause, May, but well, this is the thing I'm with with, with May, but but that, but you well, know said, Mayweather. Well, he also said made the comparison with um, 
Oh, yeah, yeah that's what I was going to get to. And, and Ronda said, Rousey, too. Yeah, it's that, man. I'm loving it. Um, that was the comparison. Basically, he was saying that, you know, uh, Layla Ali is more accomplished and, you know, so far. But, you know, uh, Ronda definitely got more endorsements. She definitely got more of that, you know, um, yeah, endorsements and more of that, you know, media light. Yeah, okay, but, this yeah first of all, let me just say this. But I feel like she's know, still not in. I sure feel still not, like Ronda's yeah, still not in way. like Layla. She not, I'm, not only that I'm way, not but even. it's still years, time. You know, she's still she new. She I'm down with the money team. I'm not going to go with him on the Conor McGregor trash talk, but I do agree with him as far as Layla Ali and, and Ronda Rousey because I do Shout think out Layla my, Ali my, my is, BFF. Is, is, is way more accomplished. <laughs> um, and, you know, I mean, look, what, look, Ronda Rousey's in Expendables. She got the cover of uh, the new UFC game. Yeah, you well, know, in argument, it's a different time but, now. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, people were getting endorsement deals when when Layla nah, Ali was doing her, doing her, her, her who she too. was and how many Insta and all this stuff yeah. that was going on. It was in your face. It's, yeah, Layla, Layla Ali, Ali was, was like was when female, female like, boxers yeah. just start female fighting in general. And then just social started. media and all that so, wasn't really exactly. and big either. And exactly. So, that so I'm actually the opposite. I I agree more with the Conor McGregor because he said. He came, Mayweather comes across as arrogant and everyone hates her, him. Conor McGregor comes across as arrogant and everybody loves him for it. So, so that I would probably agree with him on that more so than the Layla Ali. Um, as long as you say Ron, the first, Ronda, I agree with you too. Ronda, Ronda <laughs> Rousey uh, comparison. Because also Dana White, UFC, it's, it's promoted a lot better than boxing is. For boxing, sure. you know, UFC is the new wave and boxing is the, the old timer mm -hmm. sport. So, you know, Ronda Rousey doing it in the UFC, plus her doing it for the gram, like knocking people out quickly and, you know, arm bars and everything, not just the boxing, which, you know, people find and to be more exciting. Like Over the years, our attention span has <laughs> just really just went downhill. You know, it's to those 15 second videos and it's yeah. to those little, you know, things that if you catch it in that moment, you're it. When she, back then, you'll watch fights for hours and Ronda, hours Ronda and hours and was fighting for a while, like was that. a champ for a while before like it's really the like the last year where she really blew up to this level with the movie deals and everything. Yeah, so. and that's what I'm saying. Those things is actually what boosted it up. If it was big like that, I feel like if it was big as it was now, like it was when Layla Ali was out, I feel like she would way surpass that also. But since it wasn't, Plus, he can't so, be talking about money. He's the richest <laughs> fat fighter out no, there. Well, you know yeah, what I'm saying? So it's not a race thing when he's the richest fighter. You know what I'm saying? Let's so, look at let's look at tennis. The talking now, trash part. That's a different. No female female athlete more accomplished than Serena Williams in tennis, I mean, maybe even sports in general, no f female athlete more accomplished than Serena Williams, but she's not the highest endorsement getter in tennis. It's actually Maria Sharapova, and there's a, a huge difference in the endorsement deals that she's getting in comparison to Serena Williams. So as definitely, I mean, I got to attribute some of that, you know, to race. It is. I, I don't want to I mean, listen. I, we got, we got, we got, we got, we got a whole. It's always, you know what? Because when it comes to this, when it comes to this topic, is very sensitive. It's very touchy. As much as you agree with certain things, certain people can't agree fully. So that's why, you know, in the sense, everybody, it's us four. You see, us four. We we talking about it. But it's one of those things where it is a touchy subject. We don't want to offend anyone. So it's just. I just feel like that statement, you know, Mayweather's just going to say it how he says it. He has no filter. He's not going to think before he speaks. So the way he said it just came out the way he said it. The way we're going to interpret it, though, is completely different. So, you know, with that being said, I just feel like, you know, this is just continuing. In this in this episode of Mayweather versus Shout the world, to it's going to go. I'm going to keep it real in a minute, too, when I... Get that pedestal, but you can't. You gotta be Mayweather, be up there. <laughs> you gotta be. You see, that's, nah, that's definitely, definitely what it is. Bias. Come on, man. So uh, before I wrap it up, I definitely I'm gonna throw this out here, and I want your first thoughts. Odell Beckham Jr. rapping. Who's that? From the New York Giants. Why Odell <laughs> Beckham. The, the three oh. finger catch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, about Check that. one platinum. I, I mean, listen. <laughs> It's I business. You, I feel like if, yeah, if, if you're, you're going to get it, whether yeah, you, yeah. If, yeah. if you're going to get a check for yeah, it, yeah. people are going to buy it. For you sure. know, Let me just get the might not go platinum, but. Junior. 
You know, I, I listen, it's the offseason now. The Giants didn't make the playoffs, so do what you got to do. <laughs> he, need, he need a check coming Stop in. Stop getting so. discouraged because somebody yeah. don't think so. He can't get discouraged, man. He got a cool. fan base. So would you buy it? You going to download it? I got to yeah. hear what it sounds I, I like. I watch it on YouTube. First of all, <laughs> it was actually, I don't buy anything anymore. <laughs> yeah. Nobody buys music anymore, so yeah. like I right. listen to it. We're going to get that 15-second clip, see, Missy. I did, I did see, I did see <laughs> the Missy, that Instagram clip. I like clip? What, he, what okay. he was saying. He was talking about the, you know, about the groupies and whatnot. I did like what he was saying. So In the verse? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah, okay. I, I did. Okay. I did hear it. he was talking oh, about. I gotta about do that. I gotta. I definitely and, get a chance. And how they, you know, how they go crazy it's and nice, they, doing all the things. Like now I, you got I like the message <laughs> that he was talking about. He was talking about. <laughs> I'm not gonna Let's say on a scale of one to ten. I'll probably give him like a six, six and a half. If it gets seven, played eight. on the radio and you hear it 13 times a day, if he get a future, like, if he get future on Drake on it, it's over. Oh, it's over. It's over. It's over. That's yeah. all. He gonna and get, get one of them. He can get one of them. Easy. <laughs> one, but I'm um, definitely. I have to do one more before I wrap it up because uh, I just had to say this past Tuesday was so live. I was at Webster Hall for the Future of New York showcase. I just gotta say big shout outs to Cortez. He killed it on the stage. Definitely shout out to everybody that performed. I was in the first row the whole night. Almost got my head knocked off. It was crazy <laughs> in there. Literally, like my friends had to be like, girl, duck. It was crazy. But shout out to everybody who performed in that Future of New York showcase. It was crazy. Everybody was there. And, you know, definitely uh, big shout outs. We're going to see H2O next week, you said. So, yes, balling for peace. I will be in there, guys. And uh, you see that hat uh, trip got on. Definitely see everybody there. That's mm -hmm. all I'm going to say. Shout out to, uh, that's the pregame. That's uh, uh, Ladybug's new, new radio show. Oh, Anthony, show. you want one? Yeah, I got gonna you. Doing right there. You have to get one for Mace. And definitely <laughs> shout out to Cortez. That's another extended family member for doing your thing. Oh, and he also will be at uh, Balling for Peace. Yes. Balling. But uh, with that being said, we're going to jump into the final thought segment of the show. Mace, we're going to start it off with you. <laughs> right, we're going to start it off with Ladybug. <laughs> Mace, got to get the thoughts together real quick. I just want to say, Whatever guys, 2016 has started off great for me. I hope it, you know, starts off great for everybody, and I hope it just continues. We keep this ball rolling, and, you know, real fans, real talk 2016. Yeah, I want to um, continue on that. Shout out to 2016. It's been good. It's been seven days in. We had a nice little event, my first event the other night with my uh, artist, Nesta Shakur. Got the family on three going acting, doing some film and productions, just started. Makes creative productions, so 2016, you know, shout out to 2016. Yeah. I'm just going to say uh, on the 2016 theme, I think a lot of people are throwing hate shots at people with New Year's resolutions. I personally don't have any New Year's resolutions, but I've known people that have quit smoking. I know most people, you know, go to the gym for like a week and then quit, but... <laughs> You know, if you have your New Year's resolution, don't let other people discourage you. Stick with it. Try to stick with it and make it a good year for everybody out there. I'm just going to say, everybody, have a blessed 2016. If you're producing, keep on producing. If you haven't started yet, get started. Do what you do. Keep building. Brand yourself. Make sure y'all following us at Real Fan Talk on Instagram and on Twitter. And uh, hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk, Real Fans Real and uh, YouTube.com forward slash for the fans productions for myself trip young mark the stat man scavage ladybug and our special guest anthony mason jr make sure y'all follow him too young mace jr on instagram we got to get up out of here it's about that time we about to be up in cityscapes as mace was saying some little uh, shout out to the, to the, to the <laughs> ladybug come with us well. all right <laughs> Balling for peace, too. We up in there in two. Face facts, what up, what up? Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time. For the white and black fans, Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. Uh -huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Is Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them. First.